Marie Curie has left a lasting impact on me. Her relentless determination, self-belief, insatiable curiosity and the sacrifices that she made to satisfy this curiosity. She had to overcome not only the scientific but also the huge social constraints of her time. Jess Waite has been one of the greatest inspirations for me over the last three years. Together with being an incredible scientist working on organic semiconductors for optoelectronic devices, she is a tireless advocate for women in science and has been tackling gender and racial biases on many fronts. The women who inspire me are the pioneers of crystallography. Kathleen Lonsdale, Rosalind Franklin, Dorothy Hodgkin, and later Adi Yonath and Louise Johnson, to name a few. These are women who pioneered and revolutionized the whole field of structural science. It's well known that many of them faced structural barriers that almost prevented them from making their critical discoveries. My favorite scientist is a woman who forged her own new unique field of study, multiferroics. I first stumbled upon Nicholas Spalden in a first year lecture series, which led me to discovering my own new favorite field of study. She is the epitome of what women can achieve given the opportunity, and highlighting her scientific achievements means inspiring a whole new generation of women to shatter the glass ceiling, no matter where they are in the world. When I heard her speak at the Bowman lecture last year, I was most drawn not only by how brilliant her research sounded, but by the excitement with which she spoke about it, and how this curiosity and passion led her to pioneer a whole new field. The woman in science that inspires me is Grace Hopper. She is considered one of the first programmers of the modern computing age and has developed multiple uh, computer languages. She inspires me because she wasn't scared to go into a room full of men and vocalize her ideas. This led to her inventing a compiler and developing multiple languages, which I think is really cool. For me, it has to be Serena Best. And that's because she's done what all of us biomaterial scientists dream of doing. And that's coming up with a new idea, taking it all the way through the development stages to clinical use, so that surgeons are using it every day to help patients. Not only that, but she's also found the time to become the first woman president of our main professional body, the Institute of Materials, Mining and Minerals. I have always been fascinated by Rita Levi Montalcini, who received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for her discoveries of growth factors. Due to the fascist regime, she faced many obstacles, like being banned from university, but her love for research and her stubbornness led her to find joy in her work. So Carol, Carol Robinson from Oxford, she's a fantastic scientist. She has done so much work on protein mass spectroscopy and especially looking at the largest molecules and being able to tell them apart it's super important for the future of uh, drug delivery and development and uh, just biomaterials biochemistry it's a fantastic accomplishment my hero is lisa meitner a scientist that many people have probably never even heard of but she was responsible for the naming of the nuclear fission process in a paper she wrote in 1939 she did all of this whilst working as a Jewish woman in Nazi-occupied territories in the 1930s before having to escape to Sweden. She was nominated more than 30 times for prizes, Nobel Prizes in chemistry and physics without ever being recognised for her fission discovery. At the interface of science, art, craft and design, Zoe Laughlin explores materials which through her work she redefines. Sharing her curiosity for matter big and small, I too am inspired to share my passion and stand tall.